Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us on Checkpoint. The hashtag to use is Checkpoint on Twitter at KTN News at Yvonne Okwara. I'm looking forward to your feedback now. NASA and Jubilee had both had rallies in the capital, Nairobi, today. And of course, um, top of mind, the discussions is uh, what happens in the preps ahead of that election on the 17th of October, which is now just 29 days away, less than a month to go. Should we have reforms or not is the question. And just what do reforms mean? And is it possible to do that in the short period of time that we have left? So tonight, I'm speaking to Senator from Nakuru County, Susan Kihiko, who's also the Majority Chief Whip in the Senate. Thank you very much. Thank you. As well as Honorable Otiende Amolo, who's the MP for Rarieda and also represented NASA in that Supreme Court petition. Thank, Thank you. you both, lady, gentlemen, for joining much. me tonight. Um, I think I want to start with you, um, Honorable Amolo. So, Reforms. Today, the hashtag that's been trending that, you know, the NASA um, uh, brigade is speaking about is no reforms, no elections. So now we know about the irreducible minimums, but can we be a little bit more specific about it? Because it's also touching on certain individuals within, um, you know, the electoral management body. Uh, thank you, Yvonne. Um, indeed, uh, NASA's position right now is that if there'll be no reforms, then we cannot contemplate having an election. But it's not NASA's position. We must remember that in the Supreme Court, the, uh, the, the judges did find that there were massive irregularities and illegalities. Once they speak of illegalities, it means there are people who committed criminal offenses. Now, the irregularities touched on transmission of results, electronic and manual transmission through the KIMS kit. The irregularities touch on the format of the forms, the security features and all, but now we're in a position where we are being told that yes, the Supreme Court decided that we'll have fresh elections, so we'll have fresh elections without changing anything, without changing any personnel, without mopping up anything. And we are saying that would be vain because the second order of the Supreme Court was that the fresh elections must be in strict compliance with the Constitution. What is the point of spending another 12 billion in an exercise which for sure any Kenyan would then go and impugn in the Supreme Court. So our position is the order of the Supreme Court is not to have fresh elections. The order is to have fresh elections in strict compliance with the Constitution. It is our view that the irreducible minimum that we are talking about are the things that will make that election constitutional. Senator, NASA has their irreducible minimums. The EU uh, you know, and the observer, observers group have their list of 18 demands. What is Jubilee's position with respect to reforms? Um, do you have your own set of demands? Actually, um, from Jubilee's side, um, we are not demanding anything. We're just demanding that we get good um, elections conducted by EBC, IEBC, as the court has ruled. And since the IEBC has come up with a date of October 17th, we are saying that we as a party, we are ready to go into those elections. And we are also saying that NASA cannot and has no power under the law to say that there can be no elections. Once the court has ruled that there should be, uh, which it already has, uh, that there should be fresh elections within 60 days, and uh, IEBC has set a date of uh, October 17th, um, then our position is that we should proceed with the elections and there should be no demands or requirements that unless this is done, then there will be no elections. Because then we would be in contempt of court if there Do are no elections. Do you trust the IEBC um, currently considering what was said by the Supreme Court um, a little earlier, you know, raising some of the issues that took place? Do you trust the IEBC currently to conduct a free, fair and credible exercise um, you know, come October 17th, considering what the Supreme Court said? Yes, I do. And, and the reason I say that I do is because um, the ruling from the uh, Supreme Court did not state, um, you know, that there were grave issues such as rigging and all that sort of stuff, which then would make me say or, or think that uh, at that point, then IEBC would not be trustworthy to be able to conduct um, el the elections. But at this point, based on the ruling, all that we know is that there were issues with the transmissions. So if um, IEBC is able to tweak those little internal issues that uh, the court raised, 
then I believe they should be able and will be able to conduct credible elections right. on October 17. And, and by tweaking some of those, uh, because um, it cost your candidate, President yes. Uhuru Kenyatta, yes. you know, a clean, straight, fair win. Yes. Um, so are there not some issues that you would want to see done so that if he wins again on October 17th, then there is no dispute about it, maybe even within the transmission system. Um, are you happy with things as they are? Because um, of all people, I would imagine the Jubilee Party is most upset at the outcome of this whole process because his win was nullified. Yeah, absolutely. We are extremely upset. But at the same time, we are respectful to the ruling of the court. And that's why we are saying that as much as we disagree with that ruling, because one, we feel the issues were not substantive enough to be able to, to uh, come up with that ruling, that maybe the better route should have been let us recount and make sure that this vote you're saying he had, that he really did. So the fact that they didn't even go that route means they are not even disputing that really Uhuru won and had 8.2 million to the other parties, six point whatever it was. But what we are saying is we are also hopeful that those little issues that need to be worked on, be it that, um, um, be it transmission, be it anything that needs to be worked on is done so that we are not back in this same place after the elections. But at the same time, you can't keep moving goalposts. I'm glad he was one of the Supreme Court uh, lawyers for NASA. Mm -hmm. they, did not, uh, did, they did not have as one of their prayers that uh, the way IEBC is currently constituted should be changed. And so we do not have a ruling that there should be a change of personnel within IEBC. Uh -huh. So when now they are saying there cannot be elections unless that is done, then it's, it, we feel they are moving the goalpost because they do not want to go into an election. They are not ready and they don't want to have an election. Are you moving goalposts, Satyander? Absolutely not. Uh, I think it's interesting. And uh, for Senator Susan Kihika here, uh, it is understandable when she says that Jubilee has no demands. Why? We are going for a rematch where the referee was gravely unfair to one side, gave all the goals to the other side. It was appealed to the Confederation. The Confederation said this referee was unfair, go for a rematch. It is understandable that the person in whose favor the referee ruled would want the referee to go on in the same way. But what is surprising is that I thought that Jubilee would be interested in having a fresh elections that abides by the Constitution. What surprises me is that they are not concerned at all. And it's unfortunate, because before we went for the election on 8th of August, a lot of the issues that were raised subsequently had been raised earlier. The response by Jubilee was, we do not care who conducts the elections, how they conduct it, provided they conduct it. Now, NASA had always insisted that there are certain things that need to be checked. But we went to the elections having raised those issues. As sure as day follows night, the elections went bad. And we went and uh, we were able to highlight that. Now, the fundamental issue is this. And Yvonne, you've said that you would understand or you think that Jubilee would be upset by a clean, fair win. There was no win by President Kenyatta. Now, Susan perhaps was not at the Supreme Court shows. She would not know the nature of the issues we raised. She would not know that one of the issues we raised was scrutiny of the votes. She would not know that the Jubilee lawyers opposed that. After the judgment, the president and the Jubilee team are now coming to say, why didn't they scrutinize? If they had the confidence, they would have said, okay, let us scrutinize. They opposed the manual scrutiny. They opposed the electronic scrutiny. They would not know that the gravity of the issues we raised, including illegalities by officials within IBC and by Jubilee uh, senior officers in government. So all these things were raised. I think it is fair to say this. What NASA is doing is not placing obstacles. I can assure you as a lawyer that if we step back today and these elections were conducted the way IBC wants to conduct them, we will spend 12 billion, then they will be nullified again. We'll be going for the third round of election. Is that what we want? Senator? Because you must ask yourself one thing, only one thing, and I'll ask Senator sure, to do sure, this. Sure. What is it that IBC has done since the judgment that is different? What is it? 
Senator? First of all, I'm very concerned um, when, um, like you're saying here, that you do not want to proceed with the elections because if we do, then we'll be back in this same position again the third time around. So that concerns me because it feels as though maybe there's something you know that we don't. Second, I would really want to pose this question to you. When you as NASA, the coalition of NASA says there will be no elections, how are you able to come and say that? Under what law are you able to stop elections? And since they already said for October 17th or whatever, uh, actually right now they're set for October 17th, my concern is when they take such a hardline position and say there will be no elections, I'm wondering, one, how they are able to do that and how they are able to stop elections. Second, um, when you state that you have not moved goalposts or you're not having unreasonable demands, and we are listening to them and they're saying that unless things are done this way, we shall not proceed with the elections. So I'm wondering, unless maybe they have a hidden card, there's something they know that we don't, or they intend to use violence, how is it exactly that they intend to make sure that there are no elections on October 17th? I'm happy to answer, but let's start here. Senator says, maybe there's something I know that they don't know. But what yes, do you I know? know the law. <laughs> and that is the law. I can tell you for a fact that given the way the elections, presidential elections were conducted on 8th of August, any rational court would have to declare it invalid. And I can tell you that if the IBC continues the way it's continuing, fueled on and urged on by Jubilee, that you don't have to do anything. You don't have to look at why the Kim's kit did not transmit results. You do not have to open the servers so that we know what happened. You do not have to examine why we had fake forms, which were supposed to be security features. If we go on this way, I can tell you that those elections, no matter who wins, will be invalidated. Now, secondly, I'm happy because I posed a question, but the Senate has not responded. The question I post is, what is it that the IBC has done to respond to the Supreme Court okay. judgment, except set the new date? Is she hasn't happen? because there's nothing. But let me answer the uh, last aspect of this. I think the question is often asked that if NASA insists that they will not go for election, then what else will we do? I think it is important to understand this. There are a million other options within the Constitution that anybody who's dissatisfied with a process such as this can engage in. Mm -hmm. We are saying we do not want to go there. Article 37 gives us all sorts of uh, you know, rights, including the freedom of picketing, assembly, association. Um, Article 38, which deals with that, uh, political rights, gives us all sorts of options. If anybody is completely to feel frustrated they have the option of saying, this union is not working, I'm not going to participate, let us go for a referendum on whether then we must divide the country. Even that is on the table. Okay. There's a lot of options on the table. All right, and now we are fast forwarding to that point <coughs> at the end. Um, but, Senator, perhaps um, you could speak to this issue. If IBC goes on the same way that it did before this, are you worried that you could have the same result? Um, at the end of this process, would you want to see certain changes? For example, there will be a meeting. I, uh, IBC is calling for all parties. What's going to be Jubilee's position? Or are you happy as things are? And are you not worried that if things carry on the same way, then you could end up having the same result? No, and like he said, we, we are most upset to be in this position because we know we had a clear win and the win was taken away from us. But at the same time, we are also not defending IEBC. Jubilee does not equal IEBC. They have their job. But what we are saying is they are, the, they, are, they are the institution that's mandated with carrying out these elections. And what I disagree um, with Muheshmiwa here is you cannot then sit there and say there will be no elections because the same referee is going to be the same one, yet the court did not say take that referee out and bring another one. Alternatively, if you believe in institutions, you believe in the courts, then you're going to wait let the elections take place, and then go back to court and challenge the elections. But you can't now jump ahead of the, you know, you, you can't now conclude that the elections will not be proper before we have even gotten there. So that's why I'm saying that um, they are moving goalposts because they do not want to go into the elections. What would happen once we get the, the full, complete reason judgment from the Supreme Court, which 
some say is expected any day now, possibly this week. Um, what would you be looking forward to seeing um, in that reason judgment? And would that then start to say, I mean, I don't know, hypothetically, if the Supreme Court says, well, we found fault in the secretariat or with the commissioners or in this department and, you know, the person that would have been in charge of department X or process Y, um, what would your reaction be then? That's actually that um, detailed judgment. We are all waiting on it. In fact, it's taken too long because we would have hoped they would have had it out earlier so that if there are such specific things like you're saying towards maybe personnel, towards whatever it is, the processes, then they are able to deal with that ahead of time. But now here we are. Uh, the Supreme Court is waiting until, obviously, absolutely the last days, because I think the deadline is Tuesday. We still don't have it. So we are, we are waiting to see what it is that they have in there. I doubt they have much, because I doubt that they had much to begin with. But uh, we shall cross that bridge when we get there. We shall wait and see what it is that they have, and then we shall decide. All right. But we are ready. Okay. So let's talk about some of these specific reforms uh, that, that you want. Um, you know, there's, there's a good number of them. Um, what specifically... Uh, it's irreducible minimum, so all of these must be done in the next 29 days. Is it possible, including, um, you know, the removal of some staff and uh, I think a commissioner or, or two? All that we've put out as the irreducible minimum are possible to be done even within two days. First of all, the staff who have been identified do not have security of tenure. And therefore, the process of going through any removal and the appointment through parliament and all does not arise. The chief executive and all the other employees are employees who serve at the discretion of the commissioners. Secondly, the strict reforms in terms of what needs to be done are things that do not even need legislative reforms. If, we, for example, we insist that all the Form 34As and Form 34Bs and Form 34C must have security of tenure, uh, I mean, uh, security features, that is something that was already in the law and was already in the contract. They just didn't do it. When we insist that the results as announced at the polling station must be verified before it's transmitted, that is already in the law. When we insist that you do not display the result for the television set before you verify, that's already in the law. When we insist that the media must be allowed to air live the results as announced at the constituency telling center, that is already allowed by the law. There's nothing new. The only issue here is there are those of us who want a clean, fair accurate, verifiable elections, and then those of us who want an opaque system that simply tells you this is the winner. Why Chiloba and not Chebukati as well? For a number of reasons. First of all, uh, Chiloba is the head of the secretariat. A lot of the things that went wrong are administrative. They are not policy. Ideally, the commissioners deal with policy except sometimes they go into administrative matters, but they deal with policy. So to the extent that a lot of the administrative matters that went wrong were within the secretariat, then Chiloba must take responsibility. Secondly, in terms of longevity, Ezra Chiloba has been there much longer than all these other commissioners. All of them, I think, I mean, they're now about eight to nine months. Ezra Chiloba has been there much longer. Thirdly, he took the responsibility of leading the commission in terms of all these things, the contracts with Algeria, and you know that even before elections, the person who was explaining all these things was Ezra Chiloba. Yes, but also and, the head of the commission and, um, interestingly, is, is the and chair. I'll, I'll explain to you. I'll uh -huh. explain to you. Uh -huh. And interestingly, even when the results were challenged, the person who came out and has come out even to date to insist that the, everything was okay, even after the judgment, was Ezra Chiloba. Now, more importantly, a lot of the information that the NASA team has indicts Chiloba and named officials. That's why we have not said all the officials must leave. Now, why not but, Chebukati? But this is the evidence that you. you have presented no, to the Supreme let, Court, but we're yet to receive the reasoned judgment from them that would then say we agree with you or disagree with you that persons X, Y, Z were actually responsible. Is it not premature? Let me explain why not Chebukati, and then I explain that. Uh -huh. First of all, just as we suspected, it became clear that after we went to court and expressed a lot of those things which were exposed in the court, it became clear that Chebukati and some of his commissioners were either unaware or were not informed. 
and that is why, and you know, uh -huh. that Chebukati raised those same issues now with Ezra Chiloba. To date, we have not received any response. Secondly, ideally, the ideal thing would be to remove all the commissioners, to remove the entire senior leadership of the secretariat. Mm -hmm. But because of the structure of the constitution, you need a minimum of about six months to start the process yeah. of removing all the commissioners and replacing them. You need, an, uh, you need a substantive president. So, okay. Now, you so are you, are you not going for the commissioners because it'll take a long time or is it because you truly believe that they had no wrongdoing I've in indicated this process? There are two reasons. First of all, the process, if you decided today that all the commissioners must leave, then it will be a direct constitutional crisis because there would be no one okay. to appoint and them And should Chebukati not take responsibility for not knowing what was happening? Isn't that what sometimes we hear from NASA in terms of taking political responsibility as being the head of an organization? I I'm think, just trying to understand no, no, no. how you're... I, I think, your, yeah. I think yeah. that it is in order, not just for Chebukati, but for all the commissioners to take political responsibility. Uh -huh. But the finding by the Supreme Court was not just, does not just require political responsibility. It also found criminal actions. But you don't know against whom? We know. Senator? Well, or, or do you, or, yes, 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 do you know some? Know? Yes. Uh, how does he know? Let me explain. You do not wait, and this is where we differ. Uh. You do not need to wait for the Supreme Court to issue the detailed judgment because okay. all those issues were raised in the full glare of the cameras. You know them. You know the <coughs> transmissions were done. They were done illegally. They ran away from them. Well, you know the, well, the, the issues the being raised and the judges agreeing with you and making that verdict, which we're yet to hear yes. uh, by this week, would be a little premature. You raised them. But there were a lot of other parties but in, in the, the court. Can, can we hear from Senator? Let, yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's ridiculous. Just because the issues were raised does not mean then that they are gospel truth. So they raised the issues and now they wanted to make, to make it seem like because they raised them, that is what is true. Now, you are also saying that you know that's the case, yet we have not had the detailed judgment. So I'm wondering, once again... Do you have a copy maybe that we haven't seen or maybe, I, I don't know. But what I'm saying is, why can't you wait until uh, we see what comes out before you start saying that before this is done, we shall not have elections? Second, we have seen their style. That is NASA style. We saw them with the previous com commissioners, Hassan and, and the group. They went out there and said that unless they're out, we shall not proceed. And those people were taken out. And that's why we have the new group now. But now here they are saying that unless so and so goes, we shall not have elections. So it's just a, once again back to my point. Either they are not ready, and by so being, by that being the case, they do not want the elections to be held when they're supposed to be held. And that's why they are saying that unless this is done, unless these minimums, these irreducible minimums are done, we shall not proceed. So I think what it is, is they're trying to hold the country hostage. And as a country, we cannot have that. If they believe in the courts, they believe in institutions, then they should wait and let the elections be as they are supposed to be when the time comes, which is at this point is October 17th. And then after that, then if they still an issue, they'll still run back to court like they did. Okay, but Senator, they cannot go ahead and say that there shall be no elections. Senator, what makes you very confident that the second time around um, that this election will, um, will be free, fair, credible, and that your candidate, President Uhuru Kenyatta, will come out on top, considering a lot of the issues that have been raised um, with the electoral management body. But what is it about the commission right now? Um, because they're going with the same uh, printer, Al Gurir. Um, you know, the commission is remaining intact, the secretariat is remaining intact. Um, Honorable Amolo says there don't seem to be much changes within. Um, you say you're confident of that. So what is it that has happened or taken place within the commission that assures you and the Jubilee party entirely that this process will be free and fair? What, what makes you so confident uh, that this will work? Let me begin by, I think you asked, uh, um, am I sure that uh, President Uhuru will be the winner in this second round? For that, I can tell you I'm very sure. Uh, let me begin I with that I asked if one. it's going to be fair. Oh, it's going to be fair. No, 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 uh, let me begin. <laughs> because I'll let you answer right, whether you let me think answer that. Okay. So right. on August 8th, yeah he won the elections. And the reason I say that is because there was, uh, he won by a margin of 1 million. I think it was about 1.4. And when they went to the Supreme Court, there was nothing in the judgment that said that those numbers were not right. So let's begin there. So 
I'm not worried that we shall have that or even more come October 17th. Senator, but why didn't the Jubilee process, Party ask for um, a recount of the votes, for example, fact, yeah. that would then say, okay, you know, maybe the processes had a problem, but the numbers remain the same, and we can start to fix the processes and perhaps not the outcome? In I don't fact, know. that is the one thing that we should have asked for. That is the one thing that should have happened. We should have got, uh, and you know what? Before the Supreme Court uh, nullified those elections, you would hope that first they would come back and say, let us recount these votes. Because what it is, at the end of the day, is making sure that the will of the people is what... But uh, the Jubilee Legal Council could have asked for a recount. Right, IEBC right, right. Legal Council so right could have asked for a recount. We are saying right now... Because those were not the prayers that were before the Supreme Court. That, is, that is correct. That is correct. But at this point, what we are saying is they, they were also not able to show or did not argue that the numbers that were presented or that uh, were announced were not right. And that nothing contradicted that. So as we stand right now, those numbers are right. But actually, Jubilee would be first in line right now to say, let us have a recount. Fungua Debe, let us see what is in there. Let us see what is in those numbers. Anyway, back to your point as far as IEBC. Um, there were issues which, again, we argue were not substantive enough to nullify uh, the presidential vote. But there were a few issues here and there, such as maybe the forms that were downloaded, some of them ended up uh, not being the same as the standard forms. But again, we've have, we have had the explanations, which uh, some, uh, at some polling stations, they would uh, download them maybe as Excel versus a PDF, so they were not standard format. So those are the sort of things that I'm saying we are we have been told or informed that IEBC this time around will make sure that that does not happen. And as long as those things are taken care of, then we have no concerns okay. to rise to the level right. of saying that. So uh, you're assured that, that IEBC will, will look into some of the concerns that uh, the Jubilee Party absolutely. has? I, I believe that. All right. So um, no election if there are no reforms in the IEBC. What are some of the options? I know you mentioned them in the beginning, but we can just go through some of those again. Raila today said, um, you know, to those officials that uh, you want out, that they will go the way of Isaac Hassan. Uh, there will be no election with you in office, is uh, what he has said uh, today. So what are some of the options that we're looking at? Are we looking at going back to the streets? Or is there a possibility to say, move this to what we have constitutionally until the 31st of October? Um, or is it just, you know, no elections, no reforms? Uh, first, allow me to answer a question okay. you asked, Senator, and she didn't ask. Why did Jubilee not ask for a scrutiny? They didn't ask because had those servers been opened, had there been a scrutiny, the answer would have come out obviously that Raila Molo Dinga beat Uhuru Kenyatta by 1.6 million votes. That is why to date the servers have never been opened. And so when people talk of a win here, a win there, you wonder, because then they would have been the first to say open them. Let me come back to your question. What are the options? First of all, uh, we have 60 days under the Constitution. It need not be on 17th. It can be pushed up to nearer the end of the month. So if there's need to adjust anything, we can move from having only 30 days today to having about 45 days. Secondly, if it became patently clear that the IEBC as constituted cannot conduct the elections, then we would have to revisit what the Constitution says. What does it say? The mandate given to IEBC in Article 88 is the conduct or supervision of elections or referenda. Conduct or supervision. You can have a situation where if there's agreement by the parties, if there is goodwill, you can actually agree on other parties to come and assist, not direct IBC, but to assist. With the concurrence of IBC, we, at the invitation of IBC, they can supervise it, even if they don't conduct it. That is allowed by the law. Thirdly, and so I, we can come back to that debate it, in terms of who, who that would that be. No, no, yes, I'll, I'll yes. come back to that. Okay. We've been there before. Mm -hmm. You know when we had a crisis, we had the uh, panel of eminent persons. You know when we had a crisis, we had the committee of experts. You know when we had a crisis, we had... We've had all sorts of bodies where sometimes we invite them, including either the AU or the UN, to assist. Okay? Now, thirdly, if... And this has not been answered. I think it is fair to proceed with this interview on the basis that nothing has changed with the IBC since the Supreme Court. So the question is, what then would we do? It then leaves us in the position where 
Article 37 is still available. You are allowed to assemble and protest that anytime. You are allowed to picket. You are allowed to petition, whether it's IBC, whether it's parliament, whether it's uh, the presidency. You are allowed to do any of those things. So the right and freedoms to protest what we do not like remains. But ultimately, and this uh -huh. is the last one, yeah. uh, Yvonne, when you put a section of a society perennial in defense, in denial of justice, then you are give, pushing them to the wall to the point of questioning whether they should remain part of the unit. And we must therefore remember, and this is not seditious, this is not reasonable, that there will come a time where in this country people will begin to question, are we at that stage when we should start talking separation? and have a referendum. Senator, are we at that stage where we should start talking separation? Uh, before I answer that, let me just go back a bit. He talked about um, that during the August 8th elections that NASA won by 1.6 million. First of all, there is no evidence at all to that uh, claim. Um, and I wonder where those numbers keep coming from. Second, when we talk about let us go back and recount the votes, we are not just talking about opening servers. Now here we are saying let us even physically count those votes. We can do that to make sure that we do not have an issue as far as Should we numbers. just do that then yeah, that and not the go to way. October 17th? I mean, we would want to do that, but yeah. now that the elections have been set for October 17th, we are okay with that as well. Now, as far as moving the date from October 17th, like you said, we have 60 days. 60 days go all the way to until, I think, November 1st, or let's say October 31st. Mm -hmm. However, as Jubilee, which I see they don't have the same concerns on the NASA end, we are concerned about the national examinations for our primary and secondary school children. Now, I believe from October 24th, the secondary schools have their practicals. So we would not want to be interfering with the, with the examinations for our children. At the same time, you realize we have about 23,000 primary schools being used as um, polling stations. So that should also, I mean, as much as they come on and say that nobody will die by missing exams or pushing exams back, I think it's, it's, it's immoral to even talk like that. So if, if the elections are held on, September, on October 17th. That would be best case scenario, because then we are not interfering with the children's examinations mm -hmm. for nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay, having moved on from that, now going on to your last point, as far as picketing and everything. That's nice. We all know what the Constitution says. However, we have seen the NASA folks. We have seen, when you say you're going to picket, that is within your constitutional rights. However, when you say you're going to stop elections, are we talking of violence or just picketing, which is within your rights? Now, we know what happened when someone wanted to take power by force back in 1982. That's an we know what happened back surely. in 2007. So we are not willing to watch as they take us down the same road 2017. Separation? First of all, that kind of statement cannot go. Nobody wanted to take power in 1982, and if there was, somebody would have been convicted. It is reckless for the senator to bring such conversation when we're discussing a very important matter. I think it's diversionary. It is equally diversionary to talk of examinations of, uh, of, of the children when two things must be clear. One, that even last year, the examination dates were changed, and there were no elections. Why? So why would it suddenly be a question that the examination dates are fixed, you can't change them? And last year they were changed. In any event, does the Jubilee team realize that if we go for these elections and it's not properly conducted, the rerun or runoff will affect those same exams? If they are so concerned, then they want this election to be conducted so thoroughly that there's no possibility of coming back. Because if we do, it will actually now interfere with the examinations of all the children in a way that would be very difficult to deal with. Having said that, I think it is easy for uh, Senator Kehika to say the thing she says. Because whenever there's any problem, the police are usually deployed to the position areas to kill people and put them in body bags, not anywhere else. So anybody, people are gotten from their houses, and then you say they are protesting violently, and then you kill them and put them in the lake, and you say that is how they protest. I think it is unfair. We are all in this country, and back to your question. I, for one, believe that Kenya must work for all of us. Kenya will work for all of us if when there are issues raised, 
when the Supreme Court has raised issues and you believe things they should not have decided that way, so they want us to go for election without addressing them. When NASA has raised issues, when the European Union has raised issues, people must step back and say, wait, is it possible there could be some reasonable issues here? Can we reason together? But instead, where we are is that it is no longer the Supreme Court. It is not what the European Union said. It is that NASA, so it is irrelevant. I think it's unfair. And it breeds a culture that is not helpful. People must be encouraged to talk. People must be encouraged to examine and say, honestly, what is it that caused the IEBC to display to the country numbers which they purported were votes, but later they say that is mere statistics? Okay. Senator? Uh, first of all, I think I did also not address uh, the issue that you talked about, about splitting the country mm -hmm. or wh wh wherever that direction would be. And back to the 1982, that is, that is public information. The people concerned have themselves admitted that in their books. So I, I don't think I have anything to apologize for or take back. As far as um, saying people should be able to talk. Yes, we should be able to talk. We should not have very hardline positions. But when you're sitting there and saying there shall be no elections, you are already taking a very hardline position. Uh, but to be fair, Senator, both sides have taken very hardline positions in this respect. Yes. With one end saying we will go to the elections, we are happy with the IBC the way it is, let's allow them the opportunity to do that. And then the other side, there's also an equally hardline position saying, you know, we want these reforms. So there is a lot of hardlining going around. No, I'm, not, I'm not refusing. At uh -huh. the same time, they went to court. The court granted what they wanted, which was fresh elections. Now here we are. We are coming up on that date in 29 days. Now they run back, change the rules, maybe even change the game, and now they are saying no elections. So what is it? At what point? At what point do they then do what they are supposed to do, which is the court said fresh elections, IEBC, which is mandated to do that, has set the date. The court did not say change the composition of the personnel, the secretariat or the staff or the commissioners. So now that we are ready, we have been dragged to those, uh, to those okay. elections without wanting to be. But we are ready, we are ready to go, so they cannot now change the rules. All right, so you're saying uh, you're ready to go for that. We just want to have the closing statements in this discussion tonight. IBC has indicated that they will be uh, you know, calling for a stakeholders conference uh, for all parties involved. Um, one, will Jubilee be attending? What will Jubilee's position be? I believe um, Jubilee even attended the last meeting that they were called to. Uh, Jubilee's position is we are ready for elections and we want them to be on that date that has already been set because one, it makes sense given our children's examinations and, every, and the anxiety that's going on in the country. We are opposed to making the country seem like it's in a crisis while it's not. So we are ready and I, I'm sure I, I, Jubilee will be present and what I'm thinking this is, meaning uh, what IEBC is doing at that stakeholders meeting, is really just informing people, or the stakeholders, what they have done, what they intend to do before the elections, but not for any... Okay, just one quick that. comment. I'm not sure I got your response or your comment to, um, you know, separation. No, no, He's no. saying there are certain people who feel like they oh. don't belong and they, you know, and those are some of the options that he says NASA is looking at. Sure. Uh, your response to that, particularly on separation. No, what, what I was saying, I was mm -hmm. saying you can obviously see how they change, how they change the rules and the game as mm -hmm. we go along. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. First, they were unhappy with the elections. They got a judgment saying, get fresh elections. Now that we are going there, they are saying they don't want that. And in fact, instead of even that, we are even thinking about splitting the country into two. Because as long as they are not winning, then it's untenable to be in this country the way it is. I think that's also unfair. <coughs> Mashima, final thoughts? Okay, just two quick things. It is very important that we all remember Senator Kihika, like the rest of Jubilee, said the court said, let's have election within 60 days. That's not what the court said. And I think that's why they're not examining this. The court said, Let's have fresh elections within 60 days in strict compliance with the Constitution and the law. Everything NASA has demanded is within the Constitution and the law. As long as IBC does not do that, it is a waste of time. That's number one. Number two, the IBC has indicated that it will invite parties for talks. As far as I know, up to the point at which I came here, no such invitation has arrived. But the important thing is this, IBC cannot invite 
parties for cosmetic talks. Talks must mean something. You cannot invite people to come and have a discussion when you as a chairman has raised nine points, including the fact that your own name was used to enter uh, the web 9,000 times. You, it must be meaningful. You cannot invite people before you share with the whole world the response to your own letter. You cannot invite people when you had appointed a small committee to run the elections, the Jubilee team threatened you, you withdrew, and you put back the same people to run. It must be meaningful. Talks are, are a good idea, but it must be meaningful talks. Now, my last thoughts on this. I think that, quite honestly, as a country, we need to commit to the fundamentals of the Constitution. We need to commit to the unity of the country. We need to commit to cohesion, and we need to commit to transparency. As long as we pay lip service to only that when it suits us, then it becomes very difficult to have anything that can have the support of the whole nation. All right, just a quick one, Senator. Sure. Are any of the demands that have been made by NASA or the EU outside of the law? Because he's been insisting that all of their demands are within the law and what is required of a free and fair, credible process under the law. We, we don't have a problem, per se, with the demands made. What we have a problem is saying that unless this happens, this shall not happen. Oh, so you you're in agreement say, no, then no, on that? What, yeah, yeah? What you, can, you can say we would like to see this, 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 this. Mm -hmm. But what you cannot say is unless this happens the NASA way, then there shall be no elections. First of all, one other point that I forgot as I'm finishing up. Um, the French firm that was... Uh, uh, Saffron. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, they had a forensic uh, audit of their systems, yeah. of the systems. And they came back and said there is no evidence of having of their having been rigging. So as we are continuing and talking about all this, we have not seen anything substantial that would have caused the results to have been different than they are. Mm -hmm. So with that said, what we are saying in my, final, in my final thoughts is as Jubilee, as much as we disagreed with the ruling of the Supreme Court, we respected it. We are ready to go to elections come October 17th. We are asking IEBC to stick with that date. We are asking that the elections be held on that date so that as a country, the people's will can prevail this time like it had last time and was snatched away. And so that we can then move on and get back to our lives. But we just cannot continue like this. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. That is Senator Susan Kihika as well as Honorable Otenda Amolo. Thank you very much for your thoughts. We look forward to seeing uh, what happens and when we do get that uh, reason judgment and, of course, what happens with the IBC going forward. Thank you, lady. Thank gentlemen. You. All right. That's uh, our discussion here. I'll be taking a look at your feedback. The hashtag is Checkpoint. On Twitter, at KTN News, at Yvonne Okwara. We want to take a short break right now, but we will be back with more.